So midway through my art career, I hit a block. I was already selling paintings and making a living off of it and already been an artist for a number of years and I loved painting. I've always loved painting and yet I still hit a block and it was like the hardest time of my life. It was so hard to paint and I just had so much like self-doubt and just actually feeling like a failure. The block started like during my MFA and it carried on for about a year after that and I felt like I'd done all of the artistic training, you know, going to like academies and ateliers and I had gotten my, you know, BFA and then my MFA, like I'd done all the things and yet I still like hadn't found my voice as an artist. And I remember one day I just like couldn't take the pain anymore and I decided to like devise like a strategic plan. Like I feel like some people just find their voice and it happens so naturally for them, but it wasn't the case for me. So I developed this like strategic plan. I did it as a 21 day challenge, sort of daily actions that I would do every single day that I really felt would like you know, at least lead me in the direction of my voice. And one of the things that was on this list is doing intuitive paintings daily, which is something that I'd read about in Damini Salibra's book, Journey of the Soul, which is a really good book. And so basically it just like gets you in touch with your first impulse. It's like we've been taught that who we are and what we feel is wrong. So it's hard for us to like trust our gut impulse in our work and just like follow that through. And so today I'll do an intuitive painting for you. And just like basically it's like remembering that it doesn't have to look good. The goal is just to like bring some play into it, you know, and just basically like go inward. So I like to do intuitive paintings on like a roll of paper so I can just work really big, which is kind of like more kind of bottomy or something and just I like to use acrylic paints and just kind of put out some colors whatever like colors are kind of drawing me that day. I often like to have fluorescent pink on my palette I find when I'm doing intuitive paintings but you know do whatever you like like just even when you're making up your palette just kind of get in touch with yourself and be like hmm, what does my you know, my intuition say it wants to work with. For me, there's something about working on the floor, which is like really play-like. And so just don't even let yourself start to think. So uh, I'm just gonna go straight for the fluorescent pink and just start to like feel around. It's like such a nice color. <laughs> it's kind of scary to do this on camera. I've never done that before and I don't know. You know, and now I suddenly had this thought like, oh, maybe like some kind of sun. It's, you know, it doesn't have to look good. Now, maybe, now I just had a flash of a thought that was like, what would happen if I fill that in <laughs> with pink? You know, so why not, right? Put some pink in. Then I just had a flash of a thought. Like, it's like, just listen to the first thought that you get. And my flash of the thought was like, what would the fluorescent pink look like against the black? Maybe the fluorescent pink sun is cutting through the black darkness. And I sort of had a flash of a thought, maybe the black could come in a bit of a diagonal. So the fluorescent pink sun is partially in the black and partially not in the black. Yeah. Kind of liking a bit of it. Um, and you know, like, it really doesn't have to look good. Like, it's really about hearing that first little thought inside of your head, like, and doing it. Um, I think I had like a little thought just there that was like, what if this kind of dissolved into kind of like, like a grid pattern? I don't know, <laughs> who knows, but, you know, and just try it out. But really, I think it's like kind of about getting into, yeah, hearing that little voice. Yeah, and I've got some little drips on the middle. Um, yeah, and like, well, what if I did some of the blues? I love the blues and the pinks. And my thought, my little flash of a thought was like, what about that teal turquoise blue? And it's almost like as even as I'm rinsing my brush out, my mind starts to think and I'm like, what am I gonna do with the teal blue? But I don't need to think. Maybe I'll do little brush strokes. Just do it, you know, like, just don't think, just kind of, do some stuff. The less our mental, like our mind is like engaged, you know, like our body knows and our intuition knows, like, and it doesn't have to look good. <laughs> so it, just kind of getting out of the habit of like questioning ourselves so much. Yeah, and maybe I'll just transition over from that blue into this. I absolutely love the way the color combination of the blue like works with the pink, this kind of blue, this like ultramarine blue. 
there's something about the way these colors interact that just you know, pleases me visually. Then I just had a thought, well, I kind of had a thought like, what am I doing here? But I also kind of had a thought, what if there was a little flowery situation coming up from here? So maybe as I was doing this, I just thought, oh, what if it was more curved? <laughs> and maybe the tip of the flower will be and this other kind of pink, this non-fluorescent pink there. And that is my intuitive painting for the day. And you know, and I don't think it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life, but actually it's quite interesting. And I know that as I do more of them, you know, start interesting stuff starts to come out. Sometimes I'm really interested in what I've done. Like sometimes it turns out quite interesting and it doesn't have to be a long process. It could even be like 10 minutes every day or you know, 15 minutes, whatever feels right for you. And so like a lot of them won't look that good, but some of them will look good. And like, I, I don't know how many I did when I, oh, I guess I did this as a 21 day challenge. So as of the 21 that I kind of did in those first three weeks, there was one that I was like, man, I really like it. Like there's something about that. I think it's really cool. And actually that became like the study for one of my favorite paintings to date, which is called the Cosmic Lotus. And it, you know, has since like been in, you know, a couple different solo exhibitions of mine and a group show and it recently sold. And it's just one of my favorite paintings, actually. It was, I think the reason it's one of my favorite paintings is because it was the start of me finding my voice. So finding your voice is something that's like important to you. I actually wrote an article about how to find your voice for realism today that'll give you like some ideas to get you started, basically about the whole process that I went through and everything that was on my miracle actions list back when I did that 21 day challenge. And pretty soon I'll be opening registration for VAMP, the Visionary Artist Master Program, which is gonna be a three month program that'll really take you through all of the steps that I used and really help you find your voice as an artist. So if you want more information about that, I'll include the link and you can just click on that to sort of sign up for the notifications when BAMP opens. So leave a comment about where you're at with finding your voice and just, you know, anything that's worked for you or challenges that you've come up against in this process.